At Shelter Insurance, we've found that peace of mind offers some real advantages. That's why we work hard to make things easier for you. By sheltering your cars. By sheltering your home. By sheltering your toys. By sheltering your life. Peace of mind. Isn't that the best shelter there is? Shelter Insurance. We're your shield. We're your shelter. Ask Shelter Agent Mark Manning about Shelter's competitive insurance rates. Happy New Year, Merchants and Planners Bank, downtown Newport, to Tara Salinas. Well, thank you. Happy New Year to you Good. and to everyone out there. Good to see you again. Yeah. We had a series of uh, uh, meeting some of the uh, 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 local uh, bankers, as we say. And, yeah, and you and I haven't had a chance to, to talk a lot over the past year because we have kind of been focusing on uh, um, your bankers and, and giving them the opportunity to talk about themselves and what they do and getting to know them a little bit better because we have some really um, experienced, fun people and we want to make sure that um, everyone knows who they are and is a little more familiar with them when they come in the, the offices. The interview series was great and yeah. you, you meet the people that are here that most people see and, and a lot of things have gone to you know online type banking and you don't get to see your bankers as much and we'll talk a lot about that during the program but the, there's no doubt to, uh, to find out about people and where they're from and their family and how long they've been here and my yeah, good the well, experience. You know, let's face it. I mean, I think that our bank is by far and large superior to other banks. <laughs> right. But when you break it down, a bank is pretty much a bank. They offer the same products and services. Um, and what really sets banks apart, I believe, are the people that work there. And we really do have, in my opinion, the best people in the business. And I'm excited to, um, you know, to, to get their faces and their personalities out there because, like I said, there's a lot to love about them. We've got a lot of stuff that we want to continue to uh, talk about here and uh, continue on with our program, but let's just get right out of the, we've got a litany of things that we need to talk about. Well, it's busy and it's the beginning of the year and everybody's got their to-do list and everybody's probably set some New Year's resolutions. Oh, yeah. Um, quick quiz, do you know how many people generally do keep their New Year's resolutions from the beginning of the year to whatever their goal date was. I would think, Tara, that that would be, I don't know, but I would say a lot of people don't keep their resolutions. According to my research, um, about 80% fail. Wow, 80%. Yeah. Um, that's a so lot of people. That's a lot. That's 100. <laughs> I can understand and relate because, yeah. you know, again, you start the first of the year off really strong and then life happens and you kind of, yeah, you know, maybe it's not as important to you the next month or the following month. So, um, I don't like that statistic, and um, I want our customers and, and our communities to succeed and reach their resolutions. So I'm going to challenge everyone this year to make 2020 the year you focus on your financial goals. Sure. Um, and one important and really pretty easy goal to establish is to start a savings program. Okay. Um, and I know a lot of people say, oh, I don't have anything at the end of the month. I can't, you know, and, and again, um, that's a valid excuse. But um, I'm going to tell you from firsthand experience that every little bit adds up and every little bit counts. Sure. Um, and so, you know, this is 2020 and they, they say hindsight is 2020. Right. <laughs> but I want 2020 to be the year that um, people think ahead and look ahead and focus on their savings goals. Okay. Um, and so we have a, a variety of accounts and a variety of options for people. So you really can, um, if you're young and you know you don't even have a checking account, but you want to start saving, we have our Young Planters account and it's for people that are 16 and under. Okay. So just have an adult or parent bring you in and, and um, set up the account, and it's a good way to start a habit that will benefit you and last a lifetime. Um, <clears throat> you know, you can save for individual goals if you mm -hmm. are looking to maybe purchase your first home. 
um, you know, that's a great goal and that's sure. a, a good reason to start saving. It could be something, you know, maybe not as grand, but as important to you. So um, <clears throat> whatever your goal is and whatever your budget is and whatever your age is, we have an account that will help you save and reach those goals. Well, you, you talk about, you know, Christmas club accounts, and we talk about that often and, 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 and talk about the whys, and, you know, people will give you the why not, but why 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 invest? Why, why put it in the bank? I mean, oh. people talk about, well, I could keep it in the shoebox at home, but, I mean, sometimes that might not work. You can, sure, but, um, you know, if your shoebox was to blow away or catch on fire, your savings is gone. <laughs> it's gone. Um, you know, if you if you put it in a bank account, in a savings account, um, it's secure. It's solid. It, it's going to be safe for you, and it's going to be there for you whenever you need it. Um, you know, uh, we can also make it a lot easier to save. A lot of times, if you're just doing it, you know, in your home, um, and you don't have a specific plan. You might think, oh, instead of putting it in here, I'm actually, I'm really, I need, you know. Let me take a little out of there. Let me take a little out, or I need, I'm, I'm going to skip putting it in. We have an auto drive program to where you can decide when you want it to come out of your account, whether it's on a payday or, or however you want to do it, and you decide how much, and it just automatically comes out. And believe me, if you set it up to be automated like that, it's so much easier. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. And honestly, you know, you're not going to miss it. You're not going to miss it. No, absolutely not. Um, and then another reason you want to do it in a bank is because, hey, we're going to pay you some interest on it. <laughs> so you're not going to earn any more money than you put in that shoebox. You're not going to open <laughs> it up and see right. more money in there magically. But if you put it with a bank, um, then, you know, we have, again, a variety of accounts at a variety of interest rates. But um, you're going to get some. You're going to make money on it. And one of the great ones, speaking of the Christmas Club, we um, we're offering up to three percent on our Christmas Club accounts wow, right that's now. Awesome. So now is the time yeah. to really start that. And um, I guarantee you, when Christmas hits, you'll be glad you did. Oh, because Christmas costs money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it costs money. And, if and it's nice to have that. I mean, you have that little, you have your shoebox, but you have your shoebox at the bank. Right. And they're going to pay you some money. Right. We're going to pay you some money to keep it in our shoebox up here at the bank. That's and the then Black Friday, on. you just go check that list that's off. That's exactly and you right. You got it. You got that money. And don't go in debt. So that's right. plan ahead, you know. So that's my challenge. And that's a great challenge to everybody. And, and it, it kind of brings up to me when, when you talk about automatic and you start talking about automatic bill pay and what Merchants and Planners Bank, you know, just if you're going to deposit your check into the bank and then talk a little bit about automatic bill pay and how that works and the different types of automatic bill pays that we have. Well, you know, um, so many things are automated and we offer our customers the option to, you know, to, to get it all set up so you don't have to think about it and you don't have to worry about it. So we do have, um, we have expanded the options within our bill payment um, service. And, you know, if you, if you bank with us, if you have an online account, what we call a net teller account, um, then you get all of these services and options free. Um, it's just part of being a customer. And so you can go in and, you know, you, it does take a little bit to kind of list the people that you want to pay. Um, right. So if you want to get your cable bill paid or um, your rent or whatever bills that you receive each month, um, you kind of go in and, and get them set up and say when you want to pay them. You can do a one-time payment. You can do a monthly payment. You can have it on a certain date. You can have it on the third Thursday. You know, it really is you have a lot of options um, of how to structure it so that it is an automatic payment. You're not late. You don't miss it. Um, and you don't have to do anything. Right. And it's taken yeah. care of. Again, planning ahead um, and making sure that, you know, you're ready for that and it's set up and you don't miss anything. And, you know, it, people will go and they talk about, you know, get automation with your bill, even if you have a whatever account. You have a Sears account and then you can get a paper statement or you can get an email statement, blah, blah, blah. But when you're having those bills paid and you get your statement in, whether it's either one of those, you could look at it, it's got, it, it was automatically withdrawn on this day, and you look at it and then you file it. You don't have to sit down. You don't have to take time. You don't have to write a check. You don't have to get the envelope. You don't have to get the stamp. You don't have to go down to the post office. You don't have to send it. You, right. It saves you a bunch of time. It saves a bunch of time. And even if you have, um, you know, 
places where maybe they don't take your online payment and you know they still need a paper payment, mm -hmm. you can set it up online with us and we'll send them the check. Absolutely. Saving you the check, saving you the stamp. Absolutely. It also works for, you know, person to person payments and this has really come up a lot with um, you know, options like PayPal where um, you know, you go out to dinner with a friend and the friend covers it all because, you know, you don't have any cash on you or whatever and you want to pay that friend back for, for dinner. So we have an option on our bill pay tab to pay a person and you can submit the money to them electronically, just like you would in um, um, PayPal sure. or what have you. But this is a service from us, from your bank. So you do not have to enter any of your account information into a third party's site or um, portal. You, it's already there because we're your bank and it's free. So it's a great option and we, um, all of our staff members are, are trained in it and would love to talk to you more about how to use it if anybody out there has any questions or is interested in it. Well, we have a lot of great services at our hometown bank right here at Merchants and Planners. And you, if we got something else that we need to quickly cover, just then we got a minute or so. Um, I guess, you know, just thank everyone. Thank you all for, um, for, for being great customers, for being great community members. Um, and we always welcome everyone's input and suggestions. You know, if we're doing a great job, we love to hear that. But if there's something that, that our customers want that we're not offering, then we want to hear that too. You know, we want to hear the good, bad, and the ugly, and we welcome everyone's feedback. But we, we just thank everyone for their business and appreciate them, and we're looking forward to 2020. Local girl, Tara Salinas at a local bank, Merchants of Planners Bank. We're in downtown Newport, and locations is throughout northeast and north central Arkansas. Thank you, girl. Good thank to see you. So Happy much. New Year. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Well, another in a series of interviews uh, with the CASA folks, and we're visiting with Amanda Parrish, who's the Executive Director of the 3rd Judicial District for, for CASA. And welcome. Good Thank to see you. you. Thank you. Good to see you. First of all, we've got to find out a little bit about you, and then uh, uh, let's explain again what CASA is, and we'll talk a little bit more specifically about what you do as the Executive Director. Okay. Um, I've been with CASA a little over four years. I am the Director. Um, my job is really quite boring. In, out of all the positions at CASA. Right. I oversee the finances. Um, I make sure that our budget um, is where it should be. I do all the grant paperwork. I make sure we're meeting all our standards, um, our Arkansas State CASA standards, our national CASA standards. That's my job, um, to make sure everything's running smoothly behind the scenes. Sure. And, and CASA itself, tell us what CASA is and what CASA does. Um, CASA stands for Court Appointed Special Advocates. Um, we advocate for children in the foster care system due to abuse or neglect. Um, we visit with that child, we visit with the foster parents, we visit with DHS, um, social workers. We are unbiased. Um, our, our main purpose is the best interest of the child. That's what we do. I had several people that asked me that have watched this series of interviews, which have been fantastic, and we had some feedback from the community and, and have gotten a, a, a couple of volunteers. And, and uh, uh, But we need more volunteers, and we're looking for volunteers, and we want to, uh, first, a couple of things. If you have questions, you're, you're welcome to ask them right here, and then Amanda will come back and we'll answer some of yes. those questions for mm -hmm. you if you have any questions. But something that I wanted to point out, uh, point out we're not talking about kids who are in, in, in the court system. These, these are not kids who are in trouble. These are, these are kids that just, for some unfortunate reason, need some help. Kind of explain that. Well, these kids, I mean, think about um, growing up as a child. Uh -huh. Think about what you grow up with is your normal. Whether that's a good or bad environment, that's your normal. These kids are being taken out of their environments, away from their parents, who they love regardless of the choices those parents make and they're scared. They have no idea, where's my mom, where's my dad, where's, sometimes where's my brothers, where's my sisters. As CASA advocates, we come in and we say, hi, my name's Miss Amanda. My sole purpose here is to make sure you're doing okay. okay. Um, I know this time is scary. I know you're confused, but I want you to know I care about you and we're going to figure things out. Well, and we'll talk about training here in just a little bit, but I think 
the one thing that, that we're missing in our county. Our other counties have lots of volunteers, and for some reason here in Newport and Jackson County, we haven't gotten the, the influx of, 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 maybe we're not getting the information out there correctly. We know a lot of people are watching these videos and responding to the videos, have a lot of views on videos, but we're not getting the questions to be asked, and, and there, there should be lots of questions, and people should go, that's something that I need to do. And you, you, you got to have a heart. you got to have a heart. And I said this before we got on the air. I can't remember anything in Newport, Arkansas, where there was a need that the folks in Newport, Arkansas and Jackson County didn't step up to the front and say, we're going to help make this thing work. We need their help. Right. We need their help. Yeah, and I'm a firm believer that if you're listening today, you're listening for a reason. And if you have that little wiggle in your heart that says, this might be something I would be interested in doing, but I'm just not sure, you guys can contact me. You can post on this Facebook, hey, I've got questions, Amanda. I would love to come back and answer those questions. I know sometimes when we mention the word foster care and court system, that it can be scary. Sure. And that we automatically assume the worst situation. But you guys, I've been with CASA for four years, and I have witnessed some of the most precious moments of my life. Yesterday we had two wonderful adoptions that I wish we could share with you guys, the pictures of the kids, but they would have broke your heart. They were so precious. Um, and getting to go home with their forever families. Um, a lot of what we do is not public knowledge because they are minor kids, but the blessings you receive, it sounds selfish. Hey, I work for CASA, but guess what I get to see every day? And people in Newport are some of the best people I've ever met. Right. Um, I feel like there's people out there that would be involved. They just don't know how or they're just kind of on the fence about it. Sure. I encourage you to reach out to us. Let me answer your questions. I would love to do that. Well, and, and another thing that you and I had talked about before we got on was if somebody, say a lady, for example, and, and she says, you know, I'd like to do this, but I really don't want to do it by myself, or a gentleman, either one, you know, I, don't, I really don't want to do this by myself, uh, that we can team up. Oh, yeah, definitely. We can have a team. We can, you know, I mean, that's awesome that you could do that. Yeah, husband and wives, uh, best friends. We've even had mothers and daughters do it together, just because it's great to have that person to bounce ideas off of. I don't know about you, but in my marriage, one of us is more rational than the other at some time, and that works great in these situations. Yeah, in ours, there's one boss and there's one that's not, and, <laughs> and I am the not. <laughs> no, that's for a fact. <laughs> that is correct. But we asked the folks in Newport, Arkansas, folks, volunteer, how can we get in touch with you other than here? I mean, we want you to ask questions here on Facebook. You'll be following. You yes. can answer on Facebook. We'll come back maybe in a couple of weeks and answer some questions. But if they have more questions, how can they contact you, or, or what do we need to do? Um, you can give me a call. My cell phone number is 870 Two zero six zero. Call, text. Um, you can go to our website, which is gatewaycasa.org, um, and you can reach us through there. But you guys, all of us, myself included, and our staff, and all the advocates you've already heard speak, we all love what we do. Right. And I think if you ask anybody that's involved with CASA, they're never going to say, "Oh, I regret that," because you get to witness, you get to be a part of things of the bigger picture. This world we live in is just not about us. It's about every single kid that's going to grow up and have kids of their own, and they're going to be the next generation here. Well, and, and we reiterate again that these kids are in situations where it's because of choices that their yes. parents made. Uh, not necessarily bad people. No, nope. <laughs> just just some bad choices, and maybe the and 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 what what uh, and we're not DHS. No, we're not. No, what we're we're we're, we're an advocate. Uh, for that child that can help that child uh, be a be a, a a a stable force in this kid's life when they don't have it right now right. and they need it up until the time either you know where the kids get adopted or you know you get into foster care and I mean it's it's a wide range of things but we stress so much that these are not troubled kids folks these are not kids that have been in trouble and and the, they're in the court system I mean these are good kids with big hearts that need somebody that will advocate somebody that can stand up for them it's tough and scary being an eight-year-old kid and, and, and not knowing what to do or where you're going to go, where you're going to get your next meal or where you're going to be. Right. It's very hard. And, and I'll tell you, typically our advocates are kids that 
um, needed a CASA volunteer right. when they were ch when they were children, or there are people that have had wonderful childhoods and they want to give back into the into the community. We're looking for everyday people. You don't have a, have to have a special degree. You don't have to look a certain way. All you have to do is have the heart to care. You got to have a big heart. Yeah, that's you it. You got a big heart, a big heart to care. And, and before we finish up, Amanda, uh, we want to mention about the new judge. Oh yes, um, Rob Bratton, who is from Jackson County. Uh, has taken, a, he's been appointed to replace um, Judge Garner who passed away this past year. Um, so he started last week in Lawrence County and he's doing a great job. So you guys will be reporting to him if I know some of you are thinking about advocating and if you choose to make that decision you'll be reporting to um, Judge Ratton. Well and I think it's a big plus also for yeah. the folks in Jackson County. Rob's just a great guy and, and, and been in this community a long long time and a well respected gentleman in the community and, and a great judge too. Yes. And so uh, uh, again we pleaded the folks in Newport Arkansas we need your help we want your help. Uh, it's not for me it's not for you. If you love kids and you want to help we need your help to volunteer for CASA and again, the information is at the bottom of your screen. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you so much for having me. Farmer's Tire Mart, where the rubber meets the road, and uh, Marty Bain Brown joins us, and we're going to talk about why it's important, and it's a special time of year, and it's a great time to talk about being safe and want everybody to be happy because we have a holiday coming up. And yes, it's Valentine's Day coming up, and what better gift to give your sweetheart than the gift of safety and security on the road. People don't think about that a lot. They don't think that Valentine would be a good day to, to do that, but what better time to, to right. consider about I mean, buying a set of tires? If, if this is the person that you truly love, you want them to be safe, let's get them some new tires. Let's make sure their car's tuned up. It's, let's just get them fixed up. Hey. At Farmers Tire Mart, we do a lot more than tires. We've always done more than tires. We have a service department that is literally second to none, and people come from all around, you know, northeast, north central Arkansas to get their automobiles worked on. Talk about some of the things that we can do to, to fix and, and repair the automobile in the shop. Well, a lot of times, and, and I love when, when older ladies come in here and they'll say, well, it's making a thud noise. Making a I thud. Love, I love when they describe the noises their cars make. Right. Um, Bruce is great at diagnosing these, he these is awesome. strange noises. He is awesome. Um, you know, and a lot of times he can fix them. Some, you know, once in a while something will come through that, that we will have to refer him to the dealer, but more often than not, Bruce can fix it. Well, he, work, he works on our cars, he works on our trucks, and, and, and it doesn't matter. And, and let me tell you what, not just talking about the women, because a lot of times I have the thud or the <laughs> clank or the clunk. There's a clunk <laughs> or there's a little ding, ding, ding going on, and can you tell me what that is? And then, uh, but there's no doubt he's awesome at what he does. And, and uh, you guys, uh, you know, you talk about tires and getting tires. We ask you to come by, you look, you see, you price the tires. If we don't have those tires in stock, we can certainly get them. How long does it take us to get some tires? Typically, if the warehouse has them in stock, we can have them the next day. There you Monday, go. Monday through Thursday, we can have them next day. Fridays, it'll be on Monday. Okay, yeah, get them mounted, balanced, ready to go. And uh, uh, the Bain family has been been here for many, many years taking care of folks around uh, around this part of the country and where the rubber meets the road's kind of been the philosophy, but that's exactly what happens right here. Now, I, you know, I, I look at ATV tires, you know, you know right here on the showroom floor. Tell us about all types of tires that we do. Well, um, we do four-wheeler side-by-side tires, car tires, light truck tires, big truck tires. Yeah. I mean, if it's got tires, we can work on it. And we're coming up on a season when the farmer's about to get back into the field. And Absolutely. And we get out there when there's a need. That's right. And right now they're hauling rice and beans um, here and there. And the big truck tires, we're doing a lot of those right now. Yeah, when they go down, they, 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 you don't you don't fix those right out there on the road. You have to call somebody. Right. And, and they call Farmer's Tire Mart to that's come right. out. Got, got, a, got a truck that we just go right out there and we get them fixed. Absolutely. But uh, there's no doubt that uh, uh, you've come in and, and, and been a great part of this business and, and, and your mom and dad are, are uh, doing well and, and uh, you know, we want to uh, uh, say look forward to them getting better as Absolutely. we go, running into a few little health issues, but we all do at, at certain times in our life. And, right, uh, that's but, just part I, of growing older and, and I'm and thankful with them. 
thankful they're here to grow older. Absolutely. Marty Bain uh, Brown joins us to talk about uh, the tire business at Farmer's Tire Mart. And, uh, we're on Malcolm Avenue, and we've been here a long, long time. We've been taking care of folks. And, and you, you know, you talk about Bruce and the other guys in the shop. These guys have been here forever. It's an experienced group. Yes, and that means a lot. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. There's, there's a lot of people who come in here and say, well, I want this person to change my oil because this one always changes my oil. That's right. That's exactly so, right. So, you know, that means so much. It's just it's a little added comfort to the customer. And that's, that's what we, we thrive on that here. Well, we do oil changes. We do uh, uh, brake work, you know, front and rear brakes, uh, uh, from alignments to, to balancing tires and wheels. You know, if you've got something, i got a little shimmy in the front end. It's, you know, it's something not only that you hear, but something maybe that you feel. Right. I, I got a little shimmy, and, and we can get the little shimmy out or tell you why you got a little shimmy. We can. We can, and we do ball joints, uh, tie rod ends. You name it, we can do it. Some people tell us that they've got a little uh, shake, rattle, rattle and roll, and, and, and we go, well, we probably can't help you there. <laughs> Get on the dance floor to do that. But uh, we recommend Farmer's Tire Mart. I've been doing business here for many, many years. We'll continue to do so. Uh, taking care of some folks who were just traveling uh, through today and stopped in, had to get them a couple of tires and on their way, uh, 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 you know, working guys that are just traveling through Newport, Arkansas. We appreciate you guys stopping by and doing a little business with Mr. Tommy Bain, Miss Marty. And uh, uh, we encourage you, if you've got some uh, automobile problems and you think it's a clank or a clunk or a ding or a dang, we, we, <laughs> we'd like the opportunity to tell you what it is because we think we can save you some money and we think we can get it fixed. And uh, Remember, remember it's coming up on February the 14th. What a gift. The safety and security and security of, of your, your loved, loved one. one. On I love road. that. Yes. Get them a set of tires and make sure that they are safe. Thanks, Marty. Thank you. We're at the 1900 block of Malcolm Avenue in Newport, Arkansas. Jan Jackson Maris joins us, and we're going to talk about some big news kind of happening for, for really for 
me and you and, and, yeah. and what we're doing and support and service. And the one thing we really want to talk about today is the service that Jackson's Funeral Home does for our community, not only just in providing, uh, you know, the service of the services that we provide here at the funeral home, but what all you do in support of community. Jan, you, you folks are out there and you're big, big supporters of everything that's going on in our community. Well, we want each of the communities that we're in to succeed, especially our schools and our school children. And, and we just want to give back because each of the communities that we are in have been really good to us. Friendship-wise, business support-wise, everything. I mean, we couldn't ask for people to be any better to us, and we just want to give back. Well, and one of the ways of giving back is, you know, Jan and I talked about, you know, we love doing this show, and, and we're going to make some changes in the show, changes in the business spotlight, and, the, uh, and I'm sure everybody knows now we're doing a show called Sports Unleashed, and Jan and I visited, and we, and we decided that this is something that, that we need to have Jackson's Funeral Home on, uh, we have a tremendous reach of people that's out there, and it, it, in, uh, uh, you have other funeral homes besides Newport, and, and, this, and this, what we're doing in Sports Unleashed is reaching way out from the uh, parameters of Newport, Arkansas. As a matter of yes. fact, in the whole United States and Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's wonderful. Congratulations. Well, thank you so much. And uh, I mean, it's an opportunity for us to talk to those folks in the other communities mm -hmm. that y'all serve, and let's talk it about does, those and places. And Harrisburg, they are such a strong community, right. and their school program, and their football, and their sure. basketball, and volleyball, I mean, they are on top of supporting their kids. Absolutely. So I'm really tickled to get to go into, for this business spotlight, to kind of go to Harrisburg, and to Newark, and to win at Thompson Wilson, and win at Thompson Wilson in McCrory. I'm just really really excited for this opportunity yeah. to, to embrace more than just Newport with sure. the business spotlight sure. and that's what Sports Unleashed is going to allow us to do. Well it has allowed, allowed us to uh, uh, talk about uh, uh, sports, it has allowed us, you know, but like I told you earlier, just four old country boys from Newport, <laughs> Arkansas sitting there and we're not trying to be ESPN, we're just trying to, we're just trying to be good community <laughs> corporate, you That's know, true. people, <laughs> you know, we, we love Newport, Arkansas and, we, and it's drawing a lot of attention to our little old town and we love that and if we draw Absolutely. attention to the little old town it's going to draw uh, 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 to those folks that support our town and Jackson's Funeral Home has been supporting cable 15 TV since its inception mm -hmm. 26 years ago. Wow. 26 years ago, and uh, this is the, the newest, freshest thing that we have out there. People are watching, people are responding, and, and uh, we, we just kind of make it a, a joint effort here where we'll, we'll be yeah. on there and talking about Jackson's Funeral Home and the other communities that, that also, uh, you know, support their small uh, uh, hometowns that they Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Small town America is what we are. Small town America is where I want to be. Absolutely. Except when I go visit my grandsons. <laughs> And, and then I'll I, go to Little Texas. There you go. There. And uh, tell us about the grandchildren. Well, they are the prettiest things you've ever seen. Their names are Samuel and Javi. And they are one year and 21 months old. Wow. Wow. And they are a little handful. And we just love them to death. It's a change of life. You know, for mom and dad, change of life, or grandparents, change of life, for everybody. When grandkids come along, I mean, that's just, I mean, it's simply awesome. And I know you spend some time down there because I that's, do. Because that's, you want to. I want to be there. Absolutely. I want to see them grow up. Well, you're doing that, my friend. And, and, and again, we just recently had a, had a funeral in our family. And of course, use the Jackson's Funeral Home like we do each and every time that, that we need to. And, and again, uh, as awesome as it could possibly be, and, and you know, uh, buried Miss Teeny Stowe, and, and uh, we appreciate y'all so very much for what you do for Newport, Arkansas. And, and we do, you too. We and, appreciate uh, loyalty of good friends. Yeah, no doubt about that. Miss Jan Jackson Maris, we appreciate you joining us on Sports Unleashed. We look forward to doing that show, and we're going to continue to do just a regular business spotlight all, all three or four yep. times a year, and just you know, kind of talk about what's going on. But uh, looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. At the 19th Happy New Year. Happy New Year from the 1900 block of Malcolm Avenue, Newport, Jan Jackson Maris. <laughs>
are my guests, Dr. Randall Hunt and Dr. Nicole Lawson. We are at the Newport Medical Clinic on location. And guys, it's a great, it's a pleasure to be with you today. Thanks for coming and spending some time with us. Glad to have you. Yeah, thank you. Um, we just we just want to get to know you guys a little bit better, and uh, this is such a great facility. Um, it you know that your clinic's been here for a long time. We've expanded back in 2015, and it's such a beautiful facility in our our repository of, of facilities. And um, just want really want to get to know you better. You've invested heavily in this community, and so um, Dr. Hunt, let's start with you. Tell us a little okay. bit about how long have you been here. Um, tell us a little bit about your your family life and. Yeah. I actually came to Newport in 1972. Oh my, okay. And I was uh, an orderly nurse's aide during that time at the old Newport Hospital. Okay, then great. Then I went, went into the Navy for six years as a Navy corpsman. Wonderful. And then I went to medical school, actually. I came back to Newport. Cool. Great story. So I've been here in the Newport area a long time. Great. And you are married and I'm have married, kids, have grandkids. Yeah, I'm married uh, 45 years this year. Fantastic. Congratulations. And she's from Wiener. Okay. And uh, we've got two daughters and three grandkids. Wonderful. Lots and of fun. Lots of, lots of good family. We Great. Excellent. Excellent. Great. Wonderful. Dr. Lawson, how about you? Um, I actually came to Newport um, in 96. Um, but started in 98 through medical school. I okay. think it was called Community Match with yeah, the old yeah. Newport sure. Hospital yeah. and uh, with Dr. Frankel at that time. Um, so I, I matched with the Newport Hospital and then did residency, came back here in 2005 and been in Newport since then, been with White River since 2006. Um, married a young man, or I call him a young man, but a guy from <laughs> Lynn. Um, and uh, we have two children. Wonderful, wonderful. Mm -hmm. So local roots, which is such a powerful um, investment for our communities that we serve, and, and we appreciate that. So, so you guys know this community. You, you live here. You're near and dear to it for for your whole life. So, tell us a little bit about your what what drives you to stay here. What do you think are the biggest portion of our clinic here is that's so vital to the community? I think probably for me. Um, the biggest is the clinic, the staff, or family. Um, I think not only they treat, we treat each other as family, sure. we treat our patients as family. Uh, we take care of ourselves, I think, from the time, we just don't, we don't deliver, I don't deliver, he doesn't, but um, from the time they um, leave the hospital as babies until, um, I think my oldest, up until just about two months ago, was 104. Oh my. Um, so everything that I've trained to do in residency, I'm pretty much doing now. Um, we, um, I make home visits, which you don't hear about a lot no. anymore. Um, thoroughly no. enjoy doing, um, and it's it's as much rewarding for me, I think, as, as it is for the family and the patient. Sure. Um, and a lot of us try to do other things in the community that we're close to. I try to do some sports medicine. Oh, great. With uh, both school systems, um, and our our staff, they're very near and dear to us. I think, like I said, we treat each other like family, Wonderful. which has, has probably, I think we have a, a really, I know we have a really good group here at staff. That makes and the work day so mm -hmm. much more pleasant. It's great, fantastic. Any thoughts from you, Dr. Hunt? Well, I'm going to agree with Dr. Lawson that part of our motivation here is we're not just doctors coming to treat patients. Mm -hmm. Our patients are friends. Mm -hmm. They have people. They're people we have known for a long time. Yeah. They're family, and, and uh, so we feel a lot closer. We know them. We know their personal history. We yeah. try to help them with more than just aches and pains mm -hmm. and nosebleeds and sure. sore throats. Yeah. So we try to help out with other parts of their social life too. Yeah, yeah. that's why I came back to Newport because I, I know so many of the people here are just wonderful. Yeah, that relationship is critical when you think about today, the day and age, the transitions in healthcare. Man, without that relationship, we get into things like chronic care management and longitudinal care. Boy, it's just impossible. And so, 
What a great asset we have. We thank you guys both so much for your investment in this community. We're proud to have you on our team, and it's been a pleasure getting to know you a little better today. Yes, thank, thank you. you very much. NEDC in downtown Newport. That's the Newport Economic Development Commission. This is the executive director of that commission, John Chadwell. And each and every month we get to come down and visit and say hello, good to see you, and how's well, things going? It's good to see you too. Everything things, good, my friend? Things are going great. Yes, things sir. are going great. Since the last time you were here, uh, we announced that we have a new hotel coming to town. Exciting news, a new hotel a new in Newport, hotel. Arkansas. Cobblestone Inns. Yes, sir. Uh, they're about the same price point and quality as a Hampton Inn. Right. Uh, so they're going to build a 54-room hotel, have an indoor pool, meeting room space, lobby, uh, lobby bar, that kind of thing. Be a nice place for business travelers to stay. But we're pretty excited about it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be about a $6 million project. Uh, so it'll be a, a pretty extensive project. It's going to go out on the interstate on exit 85. Right. Uh, and so we'll have a, a, a good place for people to stop, you know, between Searcy and Walnut Ridge. There's not a whole lot. So it'll be a good place for folks to be able to stop on the route. When, and as this interstate develops, I think it'll get even busier and busier. But we had, a, we had to do early on an STR report. They asked for that. And uh, it's a, <coughs> an industry standard report that evaluates the need for hotel Absolutely. rooms in the community. And so as they evaluated the need, they said that a significant portion of our hotel business was going out of town, right. especially business travelers. Right. Uh, and so uh, the company looked at that and they said, hey, I think, uh, I think this makes sense. And this will be the second cobblestone inn in uh, Arkansas. Right. First one is in Fairfield Bay. And so we have the second one that they've built here. But they have I don't know, almost 300. They've got three different price point levels. This is the highest one. But the... I think they have about 300 among all of them, so they've been around about 10 years, mostly in the Midwest, and they're spreading this way. So uh, I think it's a good a good fit for us and a good fit for them. We're we're pretty excited to see more investment in our community. Well, yeah, you're talking about building hotel, and you go, you put, you say, well, who come, who uses hotel? Well, those surveys showed and proved that there was a tremendous need for that. You talk about from a business standpoint, from a people that come for reunions, for people that have, uh, I mean, just there's people that come to Newport, Arkansas, and we we need other places to stay. We have a couple of hotels here in town, but we just needed something that's out on the freeway. That was a, a you know a new facility that could draw more people to the area, and it's going to do that. Well, our our and our existing hotels do a good job, sure. but um, they all open on exterior opening, and a lot of folks, you know, you and I traveling, we wouldn't mind opening the door and walking out to our car in the parking lot. But uh, uh, business women who travel sometimes don't feel quite as safe doing that. Right. Uh, a lot of your business travelers are looking for. Uh, an indoor pool that they can use year-round for exercise. They're looking mm -hmm. for that lobby bar kind of thing or a space where they can have meetings at the facility. And so it, it it's not really going to compete with a lot of who our existing hotels get, right. but it'll add some for the people who are currently driving out of town to stay. Right. So, but business people who work for Arkansas, who come into town for Arkansas Steel or come in town for the hospital, or they come in town for the college. There's just all of these companies uh, that uh, bring people in town. Right now, Grangus, who is ramping up, has people coming in from Sweden on a regular basis to stay. And so these folks will have a place in town near those facilities where they can stay. So we're, we're excited to see that addition to our community uh, and, uh, and look forward to the potential it brings and the revenue it brings and, and the jobs that it will bring into our community as well. Uh, and then on the other side, medical marijuana. Yes, sir. We've got both medical marijuana plants are hiring people. Uh, one of them is uh, already in the growing phase. One of them will be there soon, but they're both currently hiring. One of them put their administrative assistant job on Indeed.com, and in two days, they had 415 resumes for one position. <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, I, guess, uh, I guess there's a lot of people who want to work in the <laughs> weed business. I don't know. Exactly <laughs> but, right. Um, exactly right. But it, it, it'll, again, they'll each provide a 40, between 40 and 50 jobs over the next few years apiece. And so uh, that's another good addition to our economy. Grangus is hiring people, and they're, and they're ramping up their hiring. And so we're just seeing a good bit of hiring going on. Uh, and it's funny, we do New Vision Newport, which is a wonderful program that the Chamber does. And, and Julie and the Chamber do a fabulous job with that program. And it helps people learn about the community, learn how to be leaders in the community, get involved. This is the 17th year. Well, yesterday we had a session, 
and the facilitator at the session yesterday, um, he does this little chart about what's the biggest issues in Newport, what's our challenges, what's our opportunities, and then he goes back and looks, and he's done it 17 years now. Right, right. right. So he goes back and he says, well, here are the biggest problems in then, then and here's yeah. the biggest problems now. Well, the biggest problem we had in, that peop the people in the class gave this time was we don't have enough workers for our jobs. Right. Well, if you went back 15 years ago, it was we don't have enough jobs for our workers. Right, you gotcha, know? And gotcha. so it's kind of flip-flopped, yes, and yes, so that's a, that's a good that's a plus. I mean, that's a good plus. That's a plus. Um, and that's why we're importing so many people from out of town into our community. But the, uh, and, and I, I want to talk a little bit about unemployment. Okay. Because I get asked this question a good bit. Our unemployment rate is one of the highest in the state, 6.2. And people say, well, how have we created all of these jobs and our unemployment rate stays at one of the highest in the state. Well, a lot of those jobs are being filled by people from out of town. And so they drive in from Craighead County or Independence County. We're getting about 600 a day from Craighead County. We're getting about 600 a day from Independence County, about 500 a day from White County. Well, those people don't count toward our unemployment. Right. They count toward Craighead, Independence, and White County's unemployment. Because your unemployment rate is the number of people who live in your town and the percentage of those that are unemployed. Right. So if they don't live in your, in your community, if they don't live in our county, they don't count for our county. Right. So those who work here but live in Jonesboro, they count toward Jonesboro's unemployment rate, Craighead County. Well, now, if you put 600 people out of work in Craighead County that are working here, their unemployment rate would go up significantly. Sure, absolutely. Or if you could take the 600 and the 600 and the 500, that's 1,700. If you could take that 1,700, we'd have like a negative 10% unemployment rate. There, you go. there you, know, you go. But it doesn't work that way. And so although we've created the jobs and we've got it working here, we're actually benefiting the economy of our whole region. Um, and I don't know what the technical term is for the opposite of a bedroom community. A bedroom community is a community that has no business or industry and everybody leaves in the daytime and goes and works. That's right. Well, we're kind of the opposite. You know, we've got business and industry and people drive in to work. And so that's why you'll see a lot of these community development initiatives that are coming up. Ways to fund improvements to our ball field. Ways to have new events in the downtown area. Sure. Ways to try to get new restaurants and, and retail in. The reason you see things like that and hotels being so important is we need to now that we've got the jobs, we need to build the community up where people want to live here. Absolutely. And so the new apartments we're building, the new housing opportunities, all of that kind of stuff is now part of what's going to make those folks move here. Because quite honestly, you're much more likely to move here if you already got a job here. Yeah. Uh, and if you've already got a job here, then when you move here, you don't count as unemployed, you count as employed. And so that helps our unemployment rate too. So as we can make the community more attractive for families to want to live, then we can see even more economic benefit from the jobs we've created. So it, it's, it's an exciting time to be in Newport. There's a lot of good things happening, but we've got a lot of work to do. I'll say this before we get off here. You know, if you look at where we were 20 years ago, you look at where we were 10 years ago, you look at where we were five years ago to where we are today, and if you don't look at it and go, wow, you're just not looking because well, it's wow. I mean, we are just, it's amazing how far we've come during this time. It, it, it's, it's amazing how far we've come, and it's, it's a testament to how we work together Absolutely. as a community, and not a lot of communities do that. In fact, we've got a visit today yes, sir. From, uh, from Corning, Arkansas. They're coming to visit us because they want to look at how we do things, and that happens, we probably have three to four communities a year that come in to visit how we do things because they can see what you're talking about. Sure. They can see that we've grown. And they, it's, it's one thing for them to go visit Little Rock, but if you're a small community, what Little Rock does is and not you what you can there. do. Yeah. You yeah. Know, and so <laughs> what they want to do is come and visit a small community that they feel like has seen progress. And so we'll have three or four a year that come to visit us to see what we're doing. And then we'll probably have at least that many every year who ask us to come visit them and, and share with their group uh, what we've done. And I want to say, it, it, it's because of you out there. If we did not have the half cent sales tax that provides revenue for economic development, this wouldn't happen. That is correct. And so when you drive down the street and you see new restaurants, buildings that have been built, even by our existing restaurants, when you see businesses go in, when you see all of that, you know that all of this is due to you. I mean, you're the ones who help make this possible by agreeing to pay that half a percent when you buy something in the city limits in Newport. And, and without that and without our leadership in the community working together, we'd not reach this. But we've been able to do it because the entire community makes this a priority. John Chadwell, wow.
That's what I can say. I'm just absolutely wow. Always my pleasure to get to see you and come to downtown Newport, Arkansas and, and talk the great things that are happening in our community. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Dr. Gavin McDowell at Customized Vision Care, the Village Mall, Newport, Arkansas, yes, from Corning, Arkansas. Yes. Yeah, I like yes. that. We've talked about that a couple of times. And uh, <sighs> you know anything about what you do here? Well, I know, you know, relatively speaking, most people have two arms. Um, yeah, yeah. You've noticed that in the You can buy a watch. I mean, I know things yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, hey, you know what's red and smells like blue paint? I have no idea. Red paint. <laughs> Oh, we got, like we got like Renee. It. We got like it. We, we were going to get off the uh, uh, comedy hour and get into some serious stuff, but uh, not going to work, is it? Has it ever worked? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised that that was even part of a plan. That's exactly right. <laughs> we do want to talk about some serious stuff today because my lovely bride, Linda, is thinking that maybe, not thinking, you've told her she has cataracts. Right, and, right. And uh, probably not really advanced along, and I don't know a lot about that other than I've had them removed or whatever, but... Tell us about cataracts, what they are, what they do, age. Just tell us, tell us what you know about tell cataracts. Just I don't cataracts know anything. in general. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so cataracts is, uh, there's a little lens inside of our eye. It's uh, right behind the, the colored part of the eye. Um, and it is, it's clear and it's, it's shaped kind of like a disc plow, if you think of it like that. Mm -hmm. And it's clear for the majority of our life, but uh, it has a lot of different functions. Uh, two main ones, though. One of the main functions is changing focus. So when we're 14 and, and able to see, you know, two gnats flying around a dead carcass eight miles away sure. and, and uh, able to see something right here, it's because that lens is able to be change shape okay. uh, through some muscles in the eyes, but anyway, uh, but that changes focus. Another function is, is it protects the, the back of the eye, the retina, from ultraviolet light, which okay. sunlight. And these days, computer screens, phone screens, all that's putting off UV light. So anyway, uh, it filters UV light, protects the back of the eye. Well, in that function of filtering, it's just like any other filter. You, as it filter, if something filters something, it's going to get dirty. Okay. okay? Gotcha. So kind of like the, uh, the filter on your air conditioner at your house. It's going to filter, it's going to get dirty, and it's Sometimes. not going to function right. You know, <laughs> you're going to have to do something about it. Well, since it's filtering light... Uh, it, the best way I can describe it is it's filtering out the blue end of the spectrum, which is the UV or ultraviolet mm -hmm. end. So anytime you filter a light, it's going to cause that filter to take on the, the corresponding opposite color, so to speak, of that, of that light that it's filtering. So if it's filtering blue, it's going to turn kind of yellowish brown. Okay. So this clear lens we've had our entire life slowly loses its clarity, and that actually starts from the day we're born. Really? So, well, uh, I, you start, I, yeah. I tell patients all the time the most cataracts are caused by sunshine on birthdays. There you, you get go. enough either one of them, you're going to get cataracts. It's just the way it works. But, you know, with, with cataracts, though, it's gotten really, really uh, uh, convenient, so to speak, in the sense that cataract removal and, and the procedure to have cataracts taken care of is so much more advanced than it is now than it used to be. A lot uh, easier, yeah. Oh, it's a advanced, super easy, easy yeah, procedure. Yeah. Actually, I, I'll tell patients this. <clears throat> cataracts, cataract surgery is the most commonly performed surgery uh, in the United States, and it is also one of the safest ones. I right, mean, it, it, it's, right. I think the complication rates is like less than 1%. Uh, and I, I, I even tease that, you know, especially the surgeons that I send to, uh, they could probably do the surgery with their eyes closed. Really? You know, it, yeah. it is, yeah. It's realistically that simple of a procedure. It's 15, 20 minute procedure. Uh, you're not put under, but I mean, it's an easy thing to remedy. But it's a slow process to get to the point where they're ripe enough, so to speak. Right. So, uh, like I said, cataracts start forming, if you will, from the time we're born. So it takes a full lifetime of sunlight exposure and, and, and aging to, to change the lens where it's just not clear anymore and you just can't see through it clearly anymore to have it removed so i typically see early beginnings of cataracts if you will uh mid late 40s typically okay. is when i'll see the beginnings it's just it's just that lens has lost its slight clarity 
Uh, mid 50s, it's a little more, a little more advanced, and then when you get up to the mid 60s, mid 60s is actually the average age of cataract surgery. Okay. So, yeah, if you come in here and you're 52 and you know you're not seeing things as clearly as you used to, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Before I even look inside your eyes, I'm probably going to tell you, I'm going to, you, know, you got cataracts. Got cataracts. I haven't even looked yet, but I know you got cataracts. We just got to, you know, and obviously out. not something that we correct with lenses. I mean, right? You, you no, got, I yeah. mean, it, it realistically, when it gets <laughs> in the early beginnings. You're not going to notice much of any change. It's going to slightly change your prescription if you have any. Right. right. Uh, uh, and it's usually very marginal. I, I try to explain it like this sometimes too. Imagine the lenses inside your eyes are like picture windows in the front of your house. Every year, we're going to start putting a sheer curtain across it. Okay. You'll still be able to see out. Right. People can see in. But next year, we're going to put another sheer curtain in front of that one. <laughs> there you go. And the next year, another one. Eventually, you ain't going to see out, and you ain't going to see in. So it, it's, they're going to have to get the curtains out of the way. But it, realistically, you know, cataracts as they progress, they don't change vision too terribly bad. Right. Um, what you notice more times than not is glare issues. Okay. Like driving at night, and headlights are coming at you. It's just a huge halo around the headlights. And, and you know, realistically, like I say, Average age of cataract surgery is mid 60s, and, and there's some subjective measurements that we take on the on the looking at the the cataract itself and kind of grading out some characteristics of it to, to determine what stage it's at. Um, and I usually wait till a late stage three. That's on okay. a scale of one to four. Okay. But wait till a late stage three, and then I'll send them out if nobody's complaining. If you're complaining, I'll send you right. out at a stage there two because there's a lot of different things that go into determining when is that lens bit ready to be removed. When you start having these vision problems or the, the uh, uh, cataracts become blurry, right. do both eyes go at the same time? It should be. Yeah, I mean, should, both it really should be. Well, same, unless same you way. walk around like a pirate your, your entire life with right. a patch on, you're blocking UV exposure into that eye. Yeah. It should be about equal. Common sense then. Would right. Say that, yeah. right. I mean, as long as both eyes are exposed to the same uh, uh, environment in your entire life, yeah, it should be about the same. You're going to be getting the same amount of birthdays in both eyes. I agree. I so, agree. Well, another quick question. Yeah. A and you talk about having cataract surgery done. You have the surgery done. Your prescription is X. Let's say X is your prescription. Before or after surgery. Before surgery. Okay. And then you have surgery. Then probably your prescription, because it has changed over the years, is going to change again because your eyesight is literally a lot better. Correct. Right. Yeah. Well, just by, by your account, I mean, ch trying to use your same analogy, uh, your prescription at age 45 is X, and then okay. 50 it's X plus 5, Okay. then 60 it's X plus 10, gotcha. and so on. Then suddenly cataract surgery comes. Right. Your prescription is now purple. It's totally, it's absolutely completely different. It has okay. nothing to do with your, what, what your former prescription was okay. because... <laughs> Uh, what we try to do, and this, and this is the reason cataract surgery, I think, is, is a fantastic option and, and should not be gone into with much hesitancy at all, at all, is that when you have cataract surgery, when we remove the cataract, we're going to put a prosthetic lens in. Okay. In that lens, we can put prescription in it. You know, it has, oh, wow. it has, yeah. a, has yeah. correction to it. And for the most part, we can essentially put your glasses prescription you used to have inside yeah. your eyes. I don't believe, I so, didn't know that. So the goal of cataract surgery is to have you free of glasses except for maybe reading glasses Wow! after wow. the procedure's done. And that is, majority of cases, most people do not need glasses except to read uh, after surgery. Now, everybody's probably going to have sure. a little bit of leftover prescription, what's called residual refractive error. It's going to happen, but, you know, if you're seeing 2030, which is a line off of 2020 without pretty glasses, awesome. yeah, pretty awesome. you're going to have a prescription. And yes, you might want to have that prescription to see a little bit better, but you won't need it to drive, watch right. TV. Right. Yeah. You know, I'll, now I'll have a lot of patients who come in with a really high prescription. They have cataract surgery, and then they have nothing. They've gone their entire lives wearing something. They feel naked. Right. And they're yeah. like, no, I can't do this. Yeah, I got to have something to put on I got to have glasses on. I got to have something that fits yeah. right there on my nose. Exactly. <laughs> it just it, they can't go without it. So I, I found that transition for me of wearing glasses for a long time and then and then not having the glasses for a while. I found that transition yeah, to be very it's difficult very for me. very weird. Yeah, it's weird. It's just a weird Now, they do it. actually make, uh, you know, the prosthetics we put in, they actually make them to where they can be multifocal. 
Right, yeah. Meaning, you know, like I was describing a while ago, most the goal is to have you just using reading glasses right. after cataract surgery. They make multifocal implants where you don't have to have the reading glasses either. Success rate on that's a little bit low. Lower. You know, it's a very specialized fitting. Um, and, and there's a lot of variables that have to be taken into account. And uh, honestly, I, it's not something I push patients, right. patients into uh, r quite readily. I think it's really... That's amazing stuff. Special, I mean, amazing stuff. When you talk about cataracts, and if you've got some uh, blurriness, some glare in your eyes, like Linda Black does, and, and we knew that she. Well, but she's she married to you, well, brother, so yeah, she, she probably had earlier, cataracts forever. When did y'all meet? Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, we certainly did. <laughs> yeah. It was a dimly lit room. What did you say, sir? <laughs> It was a long time ago, I guarantee you. But that is interesting stuff and appreciate it. If you, if you need our help here at Customized Vision Care, you can call us at 870-523-3333-333-333, extension 333. Is that right? Extension 1, actually. Extension. For Newport, it is. Yes. <laughs> for, Newport, for Newport, it's extension 1. Don't, don't do 333 after the 333. Yeah, I, I, you probably get connected to Indonesia at that point. I don't know. Dr. Gavin McDowell, my pleasure, sir. Oh, my pleasure. That's great information. Now, yeah. if you've got some cataract problems, we need to see you right here. Customized vision care in the Newport Village Mall. Well, Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome to the January 2020 edition of the Farmer Supply Association Agriculture Report. I'm Randy Kopechka, agronomist with Farmer Supply Association. Well, it's that time of year to really get deep into planning for the 2020 crop. You know, it, it seems like planning is just a year-round thing nowadays. It's, you know, we, we've got to be thinking about the future all the time, even while we're in the present. So, but, uh, you know, it's that time of year to really get serious about what we're going to do in the upcoming crop. And uh, so that's what's going on right now, you know, until we have to do anything in the field. So, you know, shop work and, and planning are, are the items going on right now kind of first thing we want to th think about you know when you think about planning is the crop mix for the year and as we look at the crop mix that we think will happen in 2020 I, I think rice acreage will obviously be up of course that's you know pretty much obvious because of we were way down last year you know with the uh, wet uh, year for planting and, and the prevented planted acreage and, and all that rice that did not get planted but uh, you know I think we'll definitely if the weather will allow we'll have uh, more rice this year uh, you know looking at uh, prices compared to a year ago as they are on the board right now looking at rice it's 22 uh, percent higher uh, than it was at this time last year soybeans and corn about the same soybeans three percent higher and corn only a percent higher so you know the rice market has you know responded quite a bit uh, since over the past year but still still really needs needs to go up a ways you know because if you look at inputs they're up uh, you know, they seem like they go up every year, but they're up uh, again this year. So, you know, that kind of negates that price increase because that's going to eat up, you know, any kind of price increase there is. So that makes it tough. Uh, you know, one of the main inputs we think at or things that drive us a lot of our inputs is crude oil and uh, the price is up 14 percent compared to last year. And obviously, you know, who knows what's going to happen with some of these things like crude oil and other inputs, you know, with the world, uh, you know, volatility that we we're seeing right now, you know, Things could get interesting real quickly, so uh, you know we're, we're kind of up in there a little bit on that. But you know, up uh, again, rice prices up pretty decently since last year. Corn and beans about the same, and inputs up since last year. So that's kind of where we're starting at. So, needless to say, things are still pretty tight. You know, when you look at uh, you know the, the budgets and uh, you know costs versus uh, possible return, we're still think looking at things being pretty tight for the upcoming year. Uh, Again, more rice and less beans if things uh, stay the way they change. But, you know, it looks like it's going to be another one of those years, you know, one of those uh, sports analogies when you get in the playoffs, you want to survive in advance. And, you know, I know I talked to one farmer back during the winter. He said, I'm getting tired of these, you know, uh, survive in advance years. But, you know, it really looks like another one coming up. So, you know, we'd love to see some better prices, you know, along with good crops and lower input crop prices. But, uh, you know, we're just not seeing that right now. So we just uh, got to go and do the best we can and hopefully, you know, keep advancing is about all we can say right now. You know, this time of the year is the time of the year when not only you're planning, but uh, one of the good planning tools out there is some of the meetings that you can go to and the information you can gain through those. Uh, 
you know, a lot of the companies really don't see as many company meetings as we used to. I think they're trying to maybe draw the line on, on, on costs with things like that. So we don't see as many wide open uh, big uh, meetings put on by the companies anymore. Uh, they still meet with uh, agronomists and salesmen and people like me and others and, and meet with us. So, you know, we can, you can, you know, they'll be glad to sit down and talk to you. If you want to talk to a company guy or you can talk to people like me and we'll talk, kind of talk about some of the new things coming on with the companies and some of the programs and everything they've got available. So feel free to take advantage of that. But most of the meetings are really, you know, university and extension driven. So uh, great information at all of these. And I just would encourage you, if you, you know, go to these meetings, if you're not a meeting person, you know, talk to somebody that does go to these meetings, such as your consultant, uh, you know, agronomist such as myself, anybody that goes to these meetings, and we can kind of get you up to date on some of the new things going on. Because, you know, there's always, seems like every meeting I go to, there's always a thing or two that'll help you. So uh, I think you need to, if you don't go, at least talk to somebody that has been, and, uh, and they can get you some of that information. Uh, looking at some of the extension meetings, January 13th, uh, the Poinsett at Craighead County Corn and Cotton meeting, that'll be held over at Lake City. Also on the 13th, the Cross County Rice and Soybean meeting will be held uh, at Wynn, so that's a good opportunity, a couple of good opportunities on the 13th. On the 14th, always one of the really good meetings in the year, I think, is the Poinsett and Craighead County Rice and Soybean meeting, that'll be held at Wiener on the 14th. Uh, here in Jackson County, a very good meeting coming up on February the 3rd. Uh, the Jackson County Rice and Soybean meeting will be held at Ambigan, so again, that's uh, February the 3rd. February the 7th, at the end of that week, uh, the Randolph and Lawrence County uh, Rice and Soybean and Corn meeting will be held up at Pocahontas, so that's another one in our vicinity. Uh, this year, uh, there's always a very popular meeting held somewhere in the Mid-South every year, uh, and that's the Conservation Systems Cotton and Rice meeting. A lot of farmers like to go to this meeting. There's a lot of farmers that speak at this meeting along with the Extension University and company people. So it's a real good opportunity to hear a lot of viewpoints on different items. So uh, that will be held real close to us this year over at Memphis. So again, that's the 30th and 31st of January. So another good opportunity there to get great, gain some great information. And not only listening to speakers, I think the networking that goes on at all these meetings is one of my favorite parts, just talking to other people and see what's going on with them. So great opportunities to learn information at these meetings. You know, when things are tight like they are right now, you know, one of the first things farmers want to do is look at things maybe they can cut. I think in a lot of cases, you probably cut about all you can cut. But when you're thinking about cutting, you know, there's some things you just can't cut. And there's some things you may think, well, maybe I can cut that. And I just want to mention two or three of those today that, you know, if, if you're thinking that, I think you maybe ought to think otherwise and, and, and not cut these items because I think they're very important. I think they're pretty, you know, pretty much usually going to pay off for you. So, you know, let's be careful on some of these uh, things that you may be thinking about cutting. One is the insecticide, uh, fungicide seed treatments. Uh, they've really, you know, what we've seen in the field and what the university guys have shown, the company guys have shown that these things pay off a high percentage of the time. So let's, let's try to stay with these insect, insecticide, fungicide seed treatments that we're using fairly routinely nowadays. Uh, looking at fertilize, you know, I think potash is always the big key right there. The one we seem to get the most bang for our buck is from potash. So, you know, let's try, unless your soil tests show really high levels or something, let's try not to cut these. And, and along with potash with soybeans, especially on some of our soils in our area where we have the high pH rice rotation soils, and we usually get a pretty good response to boron too. So something like a spire that has potash and boron in it is definitely, will definitely pay for itself, I think, in most situations. So, you know, let's remember the potash and the boron for sure. I mean, don't short other things either, but uh, those are two of the, that's one of the really key things, I believe. Also, and you hear me hit about this several times throughout the year, you know, when we control the residual herbicides, I mean, that's just such a critical thing, both rice and soybean production. You know, let's, let's overlap these residual herbicides. Don't short any of that. If, if, any, nothing, uh, if anything, I think maybe we ought to be doing more of that. So, you know, let's keep a herbicide active until we, you know, where rice go to flood or until soybeans, we get canopy coverage. Let's keep residual herbicides active at least that long. And, uh, and not short herself at all and not try to maybe take one of these out because I think you could really hurt yourself because as we've said many times, we usually, a lot of times, most of the time, we probably don't get as good a control with our post-emerge applications and we're using, we're obviously gonna end up spending more money. So uh, let's watch out again with the insecticide, fungicide, seed treatments, uh, potash and boron for soybeans and the residual herbicides as well. So, uh, you know, it won't be long, we'll be planning. So. Uh, 
Next month, we'll talk about some more of these features as we get closer to planning. And uh, until next time, this has been Randy Kopechka with your January edition of the Farmer Supply Association Agriculture Report. We're at Unity Health, Harris Medical Center in Newport, and we're going to introduce you to Melanie McCarty, a uh, Ball Knob, Arkansas graduate, but we'll talk about what she does here in a little bit. But first of all, we've got to find out a little bit about you. Tell us about yourself. Okay, well, uh, like you said, Melanie McCarty. I am Program Director for Behavioral Health here at Harris Newport. Uh, we have a 12-bed adult and a 12-bed geriatric uh, psychiatric unit. Uh, the adult unit, uh, what we take 18 to 65, um, we're taking care of people who have encountered an ac acute crisis, something okay. that uh, might need some help with stabilization. Um, and on our geriatric unit, uh, we are dealing with um, dementia patients, people who are uh, encountering some form of memory loss or some behavioral disturbance that needs psychiatric medications. So. Well, you talk about behavioral health, <clears throat> and you talk about being in the psych department, the behavioral health thing. I mean, that, that, that's a huge realm of, of, of a lot of stuff. I mean, what all exactly, I mean, when you talk about behavioral health, I mean, what do you focus in on? Is there anything in particular to focus in on, or just the, 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 the whole scope? Well, pretty much the whole scope. We have a treatment team on both sides uh, that consists of a psychiatrist, uh, psychiatric nurses, uh, clinical social workers, uh, we have activities coordinators, uh, which what they do is kind of help promote so socialization. Uh, so we have different team members on the units who will address the person individually and at that point we develop a treatment that's customized for that individual. So we don't really do cookie cutter treatment. Okay. Um, we look at every person as you know, we're the sum of our own unique experiences. So all of that has to be taken into account. Um, so when it is broad, but we try to sure. bring it in to something that's manageable uh, for the public and something that the individual can handle. In your case, why behavioral health? Where along the way did you decide that's what you wanted to do? And and, and how did how did you how did you get to how did you get to hear from from <laughs> all of that? I mean, why why behavioral health? That's really. There's no one specific, yeah. you know, the light bulb came on and it was, you're going to be a therapist. Right. It was, um, you know, I met some really cool people along the way, kind of in college. What am I going to do? Uh, I'm going to be a physical therapist. I'm going to do that. Sure. And then I encountered a wonderful lady. Her name was Connie Ryan. Uh, she's from the Jonesboro area. Okay. Uh, she was also uh, in LCSW. Right. Um, and I just met with her and I talked with her and... It was pretty much, you know, why don't you give intro to social work a try? I thought, well, I need electives anyway. Got there, loved it, and so behavioral health was just for me. So there you go. That's how that happened. Tell us about the training. I mean, what do you have to? What do you have to do? The training you have to have, education wise, to get to where you are. So um, to be a LCSW, you have to have a master's in social work. Okay. Um, I think that there is, uh, social work a lot of times gets lumped into one area or the right, other. Yeah. I think a lot of people maybe don't realize that the social work as a discipline, we're providing up to 85% of the mental health care um, nationwide, right, honestly. really, yeah. Mm -hmm. awesome. So, you know, you get your bachelor's in social work. At this point, you go into grad school, um, you do two years of your graduate work. Uh, yeah most of the time with a clinical directive mm -hmm. um, and then after that you do two years in the field under a supervisor and at that point once you obtain your LCSW which is what I had mm -hmm. um, that opens a lot of doors for you uh, you can go private practice uh, you can be a therapist on a psych unit or in, in my case you can be the program director, the director because yeah. sometimes little bossy streak comes out. I'm like, hey, let's give her that job. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. Well, I mean, congratulations. I know you've been here for, for a little while, and, and uh, but uh, there's there's no doubt girl from Ball Knob, Arkansas, fit right in in Newport, Arkansas, mm -hmm. and of course in, in Cersei, Unity Health in Cersei overall, the, uh, our main place. But uh, 
uh, welcome. And, uh, you know, I do want to mention this before we get off. Unity Health has invested literally millions of dollars into <laughs> the, a special spot in the hospital and remodeled the whole deal. And I mean, it's an awesome place down there, is it not? Talk mm -hmm. a little bit about the place before we get off. It's beautiful. It's actually one of the prettiest units I've seen. Yeah. Um, and Unity Health as a whole, um, just, I started working for Unity Health back in 1998, just a green kid out of high school as a nurse's aide on a medical floor. Um, have done different roles throughout the hospital before obtaining a master's degree. Left for a little bit, went to work for another hospital system. Um, for me, coming back to Unity, yeah. this is home. Um, I, I, I can't say enough good things about the leadership at Unity Health, the staff at Unity Health. I absolutely love being here in Newport. Sure. I love the staff here. People are, you know, they care about their patients. They care about their community. I've, don't know that I've ever seen this much hometown pride out of a group of people. They love their greyhounds. <laughs> yes, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Uh, um, talking about the, the, the facility itself. It's mm -hmm. just an awesome yes. facility, and there's no doubt that you're proud to be here. Mm -hmm. Yes, so. Melanie McCarty, she's from Bald Eye, Arkansas, and that's where her heart is, but she works, and, and uh, we're going to convert her over to a greyhound, as she mentioned. But uh, thank <laughs> you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. St. Michael's Place, Pecan Street in Newport, and we always get to visit with Jay Cox, my good buddy, my old fishing buddy who's promised yes, me for years that he's going to take me fishing, but he goes out, he gets all the crop, and he doesn't take me fishing at all. Jay Cox, we have a doctor with us today. Introduce Dr. Fuentes, please, sir. Well, uh, we do have Dr. Fuentes with us today, and it is a privilege to have her with us at St. Michael's Place. And uh, uh, just like we've talked about before, we are spotlighting our physicians and uh, and so it is the first of the year, and we do welcome everybody to the show today. And uh, it's it's just uh, an honor to to be able to talk about St. Michael's Place and and to have Dr. Fuentes with us. And and she is a professional, and uh, we are honored to have her as part of uh, one of our physicians that that comes and rounds here and, and takes care of uh, her patients. And mm -hmm. and uh, great things are spoken when it comes to Dr. Fuentes, and we never hear any any negative spoke of her and, and when we need uh, to get a hold of her, she's easy to get a hold of. Her staff is professional, they work with us well and, and I can't really um, say any negative thing about her and, and not only that, she takes care of me and my family as well. So uh, I have to say good things about her. <laughs> uh, uh, next thing you know, uh, I might be in trouble next time I go in. Or, or get extra charges on my bill, so uh, no, I'm, just, I'm just teasing. But. It is. <laughs> oh. uh, we have to have a little fun here today. We have a little fun. But, no uh, we do want to spotlight Dr. Fuentes with us, and uh, we just want to hear a little bit about her. I know most everybody in Newport already knows her, but uh, it is good to have her with us today. Thank well, you. we appreciate you being here. Thank you, thank you. I love being here. I know you do, and I, I will say this before we get into your actual part. When you came in, there were several patients that... that, that you know, recognize you and hugged you and yeah. you wanted to visit with them, so yeah. no doubt you're doing a great job. Tell us about Jean Fuentes. Tell us about, kind of give us a little history about how you got to Newport, Arkansas. Well, it's it's been six years wow. since I've moved here, yes. Wow. Yeah, almost a decade. That's exactly right. <laughs> um, I just was offered the position here. This is my first job. Loved the town, loved the people, and decided to stay. Um, you know, initially I was thinking, oh, this is just going to be a starter. Sure. But I fell in love with the place. I fell in love with the people. The community is amazing. It's a great place for my family. So I decided to just stay and be here. Well, you talked about that, that your parents were here. Kind of talk about uh, where you grew up, where you were born and raised. Well, I am born and raised from the Philippines. Um, did my medical school there. And I just moved here for residency training, uh -huh. and I trained in UAMS in Little Rock. After training, um, Robert Grubb approached me mm -hmm. and offered me a position here in Harris. And at that time, my choices were a lot of states, you know. I got interviews from Oregon, New York, wow. yeah, 
Connecticut, Missouri. Right. But I'm like, okay, let's eliminate stuff that I can't deal with. I can't deal with, with too much cold. <laughs> yeah. Can't deal with snow. <laughs> can't deal with big cities. Right. So when I visited Newport and saw it was like a calm, serene community, but still has the comfort of being kind of close to Jonesboro, Little Rock, and Memphis. I'm like, you know, you can still party, but you can go back to a nice hometown. Absolutely. Always. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a lot to be said about sometimes when you say that, you know, you chose Newport, Arkansas, and, and Newport, Arkansas chose you also. And yes. you, you come and you stay, and it's a testament to you that, uh, uh, you know, that Robert Ruff, you know, saw exactly what, what you would bring to this community. Yes. And, and, and congratulations to him. And, of course, Unity Health, Harris Medical Center, uh, uh, been here a long, long time. And yes. Six years. Congratulations. <laughs> six years. That's awesome. Yeah. Yes. Uh, my my I saw my kids grow up here yeah. now. You know, my son plays football. Eliza does dance. <laughs> and then I have my almost three-year-old who was also born at Unity. And you know, I can just see them grow up. And I am always part of everything they do since the community is so small. I mean, the whole community raises my kids too. Absolutely. So you know. Um, it feels like a big family. I mean, I know there's not always positive things being said about the town, but definitely I would say there are a lot more things that I love about this town than, and it definitely outweighs, you know, the things that are said against it. I think those of us who have been here all of our lives that, 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 that we sometimes really don't appreciate what yeah. you have. I'm one of those positive people that yeah. looks at everything that's that, that's going on good in our town and talk about it. And, but there are some people that say, you know, that, that you talk about the negative, but there's enough positive that goes on in Newport, Arkansas, right. from from the town to the school to everything, the community events, that, yeah. that it's a great place to it live, is. no it doubt, is. no doubt. It is. Um, as I've said, it's a good place to raise your kids. Sure, um, absolutely. The school system is amazing. It is good. The teachers always try to contact you. Um, the churches, they always be, good. you know, they're always a part of your kid's life. So, I mean, I don't feel alienated even if I'm from the Philippines, you know. Right. I might, you know, I might not be your typical Southern girl, <laughs> but... <laughs> I sure feel like it when I'm at Walmart. When well, you're getting that, right. that, that, that southern, that yeah. southern twang yeah. about y'all. There yeah. you go, y'all. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> tell, tell us a little bit about working and how enjoyable it is to, you know, I mean, to work with a guy like Jay Cox, to work with the, you know, St. Michael's place and yes. being here. Talk a little bit about that. Well, you know, as a family physician, we take care of everyone. So a lot of the patients that I take care of here in the nursing home, I took care of them while they were still very functional. Um, and then it came to the point in which their needs kind of increase and they're needing more assistance. And that's where this facility kind of helps them, you know. Um, we're not trying to take their independence away from right. them, right. but it's more of like aiding them at this part of their life in which they're needing help. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of giving them the assistance that they would need. Kind of being able to give them the therapy that they would need so that they're not going to be prone to falls. Um, so that their medications are going to be in line, so that their general health is still well taken care of. You know, I'm not downgrading family. Family plays sure, a big role absolutely. in the care of every patient. But there would be times in which we have different priorities already. Mm -hmm. We're not saying that our family is a burden, but there's also a time in which a family needs help too. Right. And St. Michael's then acts as an extension of the family they to do. take care of mm -hmm. the patients. Um, and as a physician, I'm here to continue their care, you know. I'm here to integrate the family and get them involved in the patient's care. And St. Michael's is here to provide the necessities for the nursing, the medications and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the patient is there, and she still has to say on what she wants to do for her kid. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Jay Cox, I think we have a home run here. Would you agree? I agree. <laughs> I agree. And yeah. Touchdown. Touchdown. Yeah. Yeah. Touchdown. Newport Greyhounds. Yes, yeah. Yes, ma'am. That's right. But uh, 
Uh, there's no doubt it's because of people like Jay Cox and like Dr. Gene Fuentes that St. Michael's is, is where we are today. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, uh, it's just a great facility, Jay. Yes, it, it is. Just like what she said, you know, when a family comes in, whether it's for short term or long term, um, we can focus on the physical needs and mm -hmm. along with Dr. Fuentes uh, working alongside of us, we can focus on the medical needs, the physical mm -hmm. needs, and then the families can focus on the, the quality time, yeah. especially in a long-term setting. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when a family member is uh, being taken care of at home, sometimes it just wears them out. You know, when, yes. when you're taking care of grandmother at home or, or mom when she gets to that age, you find family members just become exhausted. Yes. You know, when, when we can take that slack up and begin to take care of them on a daily basis, uh, taking care of their physical needs, uh, then what family members can do is they can focus on that quality time, you know, coming in and just just talking and just visiting and just, just focusing on that kind of time and let us do the bathing, let us do the feeding, let us take mm -hmm. care of the meds. And, and so uh, that gives, you know, that gives that quality time, it, it really uh, increases mm -hmm. so that, you know, family members can enjoy that time and not be so tired and yes. worn out. and. And, 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 you know, with that territory, when you get, become exhausted, you get frustrated and, yes. and emotionally drained. And, yes. and so that allows families a chance to enjoy, you know, especially when it comes time, the, the latter time of life, yes. you know, they become, begin, or they're able to enjoy that time. Absolutely. And so, mm -hmm. Absolutely. you know, our services range from short term to long term, hospice yeah. care. And, and so uh, that's why we, uh, enjoy being able to uh, offer such a wide range of services and uh, and we appreciate Dr. Fuentes being uh, working alongside of us. So. Well there's no doubt a great report we want to thank Dr. Fuentes for taking time out of her day to join us here at St. Michael's yes, Place. Thank, thank you. you so much. Anytime, anytime. And it's my pleasure. Jay Cox, always good to see you and I love to get the fishing report. That's all I'm going to ever get from Jay. I mean he's never going to take me but I'll get the fishing report as soon as we get off the How about I, How about me? Am I ever going to be invited to this fishing trip? Uh, yeah, right. we're kind of wondering. We'd like to get in the boat sometimes, you know, well, catching the fish, and, and here we are. We don't get to go. <laughs> All right, I guess we'll make that arrangement. All right, you heard it right here. St. Michael's Place for Concrete in Newport. If you need our services, you know how to get in touch with us. Come see us. It is Mr. Ted Hall. He is still at White River Area. I've been gone, had not I? <laughs> yes, sir. He's still at White River Area Agency on yes, Aging. And I thought I over am. the course of the last several months, everybody goes, well, where's Mr. Ted Hall? Yeah. Where's Coach Hall? No, where's Coach right. Hall? That's right. He's back. <laughs> I'm back. Happy I'm, New I've Year. Been, I've been out and about. So. You had, well, you've been and working. And Peggy filled in, of course. She, she did She's well. She's wonderful. So. She was wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. So happy we New Year to you, sir. And Happy New Year to you, too. And a new year comes around, and that means that we've just got lots of things that we need to talk about. And we'll just get right on it, Mr. Ted, because we've yeah. got a lot of stuff to cover today. Yeah, we do. And, you know, just health care in, in, in general, uh, Dave, is, uh, is going to be a challenge for us. And it's at the national level and state level. And we just need to make sure that uh, we uh, know that seniors are important and that we've uh, got to just keep fighting for them. And that's part of what the White River Area Agency on Aging has been doing for a long time. But uh, we do have some uh, challenges that, that are facing us, and so we'll be right there in the middle of all that as we start this new year. But today, we want to talk about Eagle Mountain Assisted Living. That's one of the things we want to talk sure. about, is that we have some openings there, and uh, I've got a number here uh, for uh, anyone that has an interest in looking at assisted living, and that would be 870-612-8700. And uh, they, they can call that number. That's 870-612-8700. And they can talk to our folks there. And we give tours all the time. Sure. It, it, Beautiful it, place. It, it Beautiful. is a great place. And it may be that uh, it may be for not maybe right now, but down the road that they, uh, and this is always a busy time of year, Dave. Right. We talk about this all the time, but usually after the holidays, when the, the kids have been home, and they say, you know, Things are not quite the same as it's been in the past. May, Mom, Dad may need some help. And that could be in-home services or it could be assisted living, sure. making a big change there. So anyway, we're available. And, of course, they can always call us here at 870-612-3000. That's 870-612-3000. And 
that's our corporate office here in Batesville, but that'll get us out to all of our many counties that we serve here in this part of the state. Well, Dave, I, I talked to you before the uh, program, so we talked about a lot of different things, but you know one of the important things for seniors to do is to make sure that they go to the doctor, and it's been proven that uh, when you go on a regular basis, then they can catch things that you may not uh, realize that you need to have attention called to, so that's important. We don't talk and, about that a lot. No, either. we you don't, know, and we need to get, you know, that's that's one of the things we, we try to emphasize to people we work with, and you know, just the fact of drinking water every day, you know, yes, that, sir. Healthy. You know and so we, we just say we need to, if you want to stay healthy, you know, see the doctor, you need to drink the water. And then one of the, the things that we're facing right now is the issue of medications and making sure that seniors take the right medication, they take it at the right time, and so we need to make sure if they're not able to do that, then there's got to be someone that can help supervise it. That's a, this is a really a critical deal. And then also along with that, the, the issue of opioids and how that has changed not only mm -hmm. the country, but here in Arkansas, we have a huge problem with this. And uh, the governor and the Department of Human Services are coming out in January, a big program where we're going to be in senior centers, but we're also going to be any place that seniors gather, whether it be in churches, whether it be wherever, is that they want the word out about right. the opioids and how the issues can, you can be addicted to that. Uh, those some of those different types of opioids in a very short time. So anyway, that's coming in January. We'll have more about. We have someone uh, from our area, Judd uh, Eccles, is, is involved with that, and he's our wellness program. And so, uh, and I have an interest in this also. So uh, we're going to really be pushing that for our seniors in our ten counties. Of course, uh, Dave, this is something that. Uh, I'm always fighting is this exercise deal. You know, you need to be exercised at least 150 minutes a week. Now, that's not a day. A day, day but, uh, <laughs> and that's minutes. not a lot of time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. You know. And then we need to get good rest, and you need to make sure that you plan that. You know, you don't need to be doing a lot of exercise before you go to bed or, right. or you know, eating a lot of food and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of, these are kind of like common common sense kind of things, but it's important that you think about your plan uh, before you go to bed, you might Absolutely. say. And so that's another thing. And then uh, seniors throughout the country, falling is the number one problem that gets them in trouble. Yes. And uh, so you need to think about that. What's in, what's in my way and where am I going? And uh, when I go down steps or up steps, uh, go upstairs, uh, we need to plan uh, what we're doing and just pay attention. And uh, so that, that's important. And then also just being around other people, whether it be at the senior center, whether it be at your churches, or whether it be just wherever, uh, is people need to be around other people. And we fight this issue of isolation a great deal with seniors throughout the country. And it's no different here in Arkansas. And that's the reason why, David, the Meals on Wheels is so important because, you know, those drivers, they got to walk in that house and hand and those eat. folks meals. And, and they you visit would a be, bit. they didn't visit, but you'd be surprised how many lives have been saved from Meals on Wheels. And you can't put a dollar value oh, to that. Oh, that's exactly right. That, that, exactly right. David, so we believe in Meals on Wheels. We, we run that program from, uh, and we just know that, again, it's part of just uh, seeing people and uh, just the fellowship and, and the conversation. That, that's very important. And then one of the last things I want to talk about today, uh, David, is when a senior goes to a hospital, what should they be thinking about? Most of the time they're thinking about, oh my goodness, what's, what's wrong with me? Why am I having to go? And when can I get out of here? Sure. So these are some suggestions that we think is important as we uh, work and do our day, daily tasks as, as an area agency, is that when they go to the hospital or even to the doctor, they need to take somebody with them whether it be a family member, whether it be a friend, or whether somebody that has their interest at heart. And at the same time, they need to be taking notes because a lot of times doctors, you know, they're in a hurry and or, or they'll say things that it, after you leave, you're not sure exactly what they said. And so it's important that you have somebody that uh, sort of is on your side. And, and also when you go to the hospital, you need to find out who is that person there 
that you can talk to and who's going to be the captain of my there team, you go. of my health program. So it just takes probably, you have to zero in on that. And if you'll do that, I think you'll have a better a better experience at the hospital. So we just want to remind these, remind us, all these things we've talked about are common sense things, but yeah, sometimes it's good just to be reminded of that. So we have a lot going on with, uh, with senior care throughout this state and at our uh, at, at what we do every day, and of course we have in-home services, we have Eagle Mountain Assisted Living, we have HUD housing, so we have lots of things going on here. And that's the reason why we do this program, is to make sure people know about what we do, and uh, so we can spread the good news about White River Area Agency on Aging. Mr. Ted Hall, I couldn't have said it any better, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a pleasure to get to see you, sir, okay. and uh, and like you say, a lot of common sense information, but also information that's so important that we just don't think about every day, and, right. and uh, White River Area Agency on Aging Batesville and throughout lots of counties in northeast and north central Arkansas. It's another edition of the Greyhound Report at the Newport Special School District, and we like to highlight uh, uh, students that are, have uh, great careers, that are doing great things, uh, tremendous achievements. And one of the things that everybody talks about when you talk about high school and your career and when you're going to college is an ACT test. Uh, it's highly important, and we're going to visit with uh, Kelsey Carraway first of all. And we have three guests today, but Kelsey, welcome to the program. Thank you. i got to ask you this. You're a senior in high school. You're, you're going to the University of Arkansas, you yes, told sir. us last time. Why is getting a 30, or you made a 31, why is that important to you? or to, to, to what's, what's, Why is getting a high score important? Well, first of all, to get into the Honors College, you have to have a score of a 28. So whenever you have above a 30, it guarantees your entrance into the Honors College and, of course, you know, the coveted scholarship money. Absolutely. And nobody wants to pay for college, so a 31 is very helpful and a, above a 30 is pretty helpful for scholarship That's money. That's pretty awesome. We have three people that have scored above 30 yes, right now as we speak. And uh, uh, Well, let me ask you this. What helped you along the way? How, what, what was the preparation like here? You know, giving credit here, whether it was the people or the programs, what, uh, who and what helped you? AP tests or AP classes really helped with um, the study skills that I needed to study for the ACT and the rigorous uh, uh, classes. They helped with um, quick thinking oh, and yeah. quick reading because you have to be able to read quickly. And those classes really helped. And then online uh, classes that I took for the ACT and then the ACT books and practice tests really helped. Well, let me ask you this. I mean, people take this test, and you can take it more than once, and, and uh, even when you get a score that you like, you plan on taking it again, or you're, you're pretty satisfied no, where sir, you are? I'm done. You're done? I'm done. <laughs> after, after 10 times, I'm done taking yeah, that's it. That's awesome. Yes. That is awesome. Well, if somebody's watching, and what would be some advice that you would give to them on how to prepare for this test and, and uh, 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 the time that you have to spend? I know that is enormous. What advice yes. would you give to those folks? Um, don't be nervous because the nerves that you have, I know it's easier said than done, but the nerves that you have can really uh, make you perform worse. So don't be nervous and definitely study. Do practice tests because those will help. Anything you do will help. Future so, plans for you. I'm going to the U of A, like you said, and I plan on majoring in biology and on the pre-dental track. So. That's awesome. Yes, that sir. is awesome. Great things happening at the Newport Special School District, and we thank Kelsey, and we've got more coming right up. Thank you. Ben Rutledge joins us this time to talk about the ACT and how important it is. And uh, uh, Ben, tell us about uh, tell us about grade, what grade you're in, and and uh, what's going on at Newport High School as we speak. Well, I'm in 11th grade. A lot of the ACT is coming up. That's pretty important. I know everyone's getting ready for that. We talk about ACT and the whole program is about ACT and we wanted to showcase three people that had made a, at least a 30 on ACT and you have uh, you know, uh, several more times to take this test again. But uh, uh, talk a little bit about uh, why the 30 is important to you and, and what it helps you along the way. I think the ACT is really just a way for everyone to get more money for college because you know college is expensive. And I think that 30 is a good goal for everyone to have to be able to pay for college because 
no one wants to pay for all their college. That's not a fun thing to do. So to be able to get as many scholarships as possible and to have a 30 on your ACT helps you get those scholarships. Yeah, important. and you talk about the expense of it, and especially if you have to borrow money to, to go to college, and then and then once you get out of college, you can you can really, uh, that debt can really build up, and you're kind of in the hole when you get out. And if you get your college paid for, certainly it's a big help to going out and not owing a lot of things. Uh, uh, talk about maybe some of the programs or some of the teachers or whatever that helped you along the way in, in preparation to the ACT. Well, I know Colonel Jones does a lot of work around here for the ACT. He actually helped one of the students here in previous years get a 36 on his ACT, which was mighty impressive. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? Yeah, no I'll, doubt. Not sure if anybody else has gotten that score yet, but everyone's trying, I know. Uh, Miss Morehart actually helped me a lot with my English. She raised my score about four points to 35 in English. Awesome. That is awesome. And uh, uh, what advice might you give to other people that are taking the test, or maybe some people that have never taken the test before, or those who want to try to raise their score if they have? I talked to a lot of my friends about the ACT, and I just noticed how they put themselves down. Like they're like, oh, I can't get a 30. It's not a big deal. But I think that they should have confidence in themselves that this score is possible and you can make it happen if you just try and study for it because if you tell yourself you're not going to get it, you're not going to get it in the first place. There's no way. What, uh, Ben, talk about plans. You got another year of high school. Do you know what you're going to do after after high school and what, what those plans are? I would love to tell you I have like this whole detailed plan on how the rest of my life is going to go, but I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> well, that's the way it is when it's your age and you'll figure that out along the way and something will hit you at some time and you go, that's exactly what I want to do. Ben Rutledge, another uh, high score on ACT at the Newport Special School District visiting at the Newport Special School District and the third person who's achieved the grand score of 30 and above on ACT and we're visiting with uh, Bentley Bennett and Bentley, uh, welcome, welcome and tell us Thank about you. the 30 and, and you've been a sophomore you told me, tell, you, you've only taken it a few times, tell us mm -hmm. about uh, how important that is to get that 30, um, especially at your age. <laughs> I think it's pretty important because my brother's also going to college right now, so I'm trying to help my parents pay for when I go to college. It'll be easier on them. And I just thought I would take it this year so it would take off the burden for when I get to my senior year. I won't be panicked about taking it then. Well, you make that 30. You make it at a young age being a sophomore in high school, and you can take it several times. You said you've only taken it you know, less than a handful of times. Uh, uh, as you look back, and you've only been in high school for a year and a half, I guess, you know, going into your you know, second half of your second year, uh, who's helped you along the way to, to help you prepare for these tests? Um, pro I would say my teachers. I've taken um, a lot of pre-AP classes, mm -hmm. and I'm taking an AP class right now, so that probably helped me a lot. When you talk about taking this test and you have friends and, and, and maybe everybody doesn't take it you know, as, as soon as you have, but uh, what advice might you give to those people? It's kind of important to, to people understand. What advice do you give those folks before they take it? Um, I would say just be calm and it's okay no matter what score you get because you can take it more times after the first time. And I would just say take it early because then you have a lot of time to raise your score very young and got a lot of time to think about your future, but you said you kind of got an idea. Kind of tell us about what you think you might do when you get out of high school and college. I'm thinking about going to U of A and maybe going down the psychology path. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. And, and listen, I mean, we have great things going on here at the Newport Special School District, and we bring you this Greyhound Report, and uh, uh, we want to thank Bentley and Ben and, and Kelsey for joining us and telling us their stories about scoring 30 or above on the ACT. It's absolutely awesome. And I've often said, I got a 30 on mine, too, when I took it twice. I took it twice when I was a junior. I made a 15 and a 15, and that added, added up to 30. So <laughs> mine didn't count as well as y'all did many, many years ago. But this is the Greyhound Report. It's brought to you by First Community Bank, where community comes first right here in Newport. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>